What's up everybody? So we have another Nomad Sculpt video today. Uh, the developer just dropped a new tweet saying that version 1.33 is out and I wanted to make a quick video for you guys talking about that because there is a big, big new update inside the software on top of you know any bug fixes or any um, tweaks that to make the performance better or you know just our, our, our use use case. Uh, make those easier on us with different shortcuts and things. Um, he did put out the, the notes like he does with every uh, update. And so you have them up here on screen. But the ones I really want to talk about are the rendering ones. And you can see we got depth of field, screen space reflections, ambient occlusion, bloom, and so on and so forth. Um, I am going to pull up one of my older sculpts that I have done before. And it's going to be the Thanos head uh, because I did put the PBR materials on uh, that one now if you want to use these new rendering features you do have to be using PBR materials you can't be using the madcap materials inside the software um, so just be forewarned before you try to do anything so right here we have the Thanos head and um, there's as you can see there's a few new uh, there's one new tab on the section and it looks like a little um, camera lens or camera uh, aperture with you know little circular blades on it um, right now I'm just messing around with the background settings, but right here you see post processing, post processing. You want to turn that on and it allows you to turn on things like screen space reflection. So you can see the red from the eyes or ambient occlusion that I'm pressing on right now. Um, and that's going to give you, uh, some occlusion onto your model to make it look a little bit more grounded. Uh, I can go more in depth with what ambient inclusion exactly is in another video if you guys want me to break it down but this just makes it look a little bit more grounded in reality uh, when you have that ambient inclusion um, we also have depth of field so far and near um, a lot of these features are very basic right now but i think where he is at at the moment with all this does take nomad sculpt up another quality level on getting closer to being able to do professional uh things on the tablet or professional models on the tablet like this and be able to showcase them from the tablet like i still will probably be using blender to do all of my uh renderings for my final renders but for my work in progresses or just quick uh decent renders inside of no band sculpt this is gonna be very very powerful and a big game changer um, for a lot of artists that are using this on a daily basis um, you also have tone mapping, so you can adjust saturation, contrast, exposure, which you can adjust exposure for your HDR maps, but not the whole piece in general, which I think is really cool. Um, you have things like chromatic aberration. So if you guys are doing any like crazy cyberpunk stuff or just you want that chromatic aberration in there, that's kind of a cool feature. Um, you have vignetting, grain, sharpening. Uh, I think I missed one uh, uh, up top, but um, this really takes the whole use case of Nomad Sculpt to a, a whole nother level. And I just wanted to sh make a quick video for you guys and share this with you. Um, I do want to go a little bit further and deeper on this, but I just wanted to do a quick video to make sure you guys are aware that the new update is out there and that you guys should go out and start playing with it. Um, but yeah, if you guys want me to go a little bit more in depth and you know at, do a full video breaking down everything, um, I'd be happy to do so, talk about what ambient occlusion does, what depth of field does. Um, but I, I think if you guys go in and start playing around, you get some cool effects. Like right now, um, I didn't even put anything on in the background object. I just wanted that there for um, to show the depth of field that the object would be blurred that's in the background. And because of the bloom effect, it's causing this halo ring around the model. And I thought that was pretty neat. So you can get some pretty cool outputs um depending what you're messing with or what you're playing around with but i'm really excited to use this i'm gonna probably start another project you know especially since it's sculpt january to kind of test this out and and have some fun with it um another thing i'm very very excited for is if you can see on screen he added actual lights that you can put into the file so um I've only gone as far as three lights. I think I only put two in, in this example, but now you can put multiple lights. I think for my use case, I would love to see you have the control of the size of the light because right now it seems like you just have control of the color, um, the intensity and the bias, which the bias is how the, how long or short the shadow looks, at, at least from what I can tell when I was messing around with it in there. But I think if you can change the size of it to give you a softer or harsher light, I would also like to see maybe different lighting 
different types of lights. So like right now, it looks like it is a directional light, maybe a pin light or an area light, or possibly even a spotlight that you can shape uh, or change the shape and angle of the cone um, on a spotlight. Uh, but either way, this is a great, great start to having customized lighting on top of the HDR maps that are already inside the software. Um, so I can't wait to see what tweaks he comes up with. Um, but right now, I think you can get pretty good outcomes just from the basics that are in here. So other than that, guys, um, like I said, if you guys want me to do a deeper dive video and actually do like a small little creative project on what we can do with this, um, I'd be happy to make a video for you guys about that. Um, if you guys have any other questions or concerns, please let me know, leave them in the comments below. And, uh, again, thank you guys for all the love and support the pat over the past few months and, and over last year. Um, I'm excited for 2021 and, uh, what we're going to be doing with the channel and more and more content that I'm going to put, be putting out. But yeah, I just wanted to get this video out for you guys because I thought it is a huge update and a big, big, big deal. Um, to have custom lighting, especially in one of these softwares that um, we're using to to digitally sculpt in, you know. So uh, it, it, it makes me love this software even more and, and makes me want to push further with just being able to sculpt on a tablet on something so portable like this. Um, I, you know, I still love my programs like ZBrush or Blender, um, even though I don't really use ZBrush anymore because I'm on Linux on my desktop. But being able to have this much power in a small package like this is unbelievable. I mean, unheard of and unthinkable, what, 10 years ago when I was in college. Um, so now, uh, just being able to have this so in a small package is, is mind blowing. So I'm excited for the future of this program and other programs that are coming out. I know I have a friend who's working on a, a polygonal, uh, modeling program that is going to be uh, kind of like blender light. Um, but he's working on some cool, uh, cool features in there. Um, he's always asking for questions and feedback from you guys. Um, I will link his Twitter, uh, on here. If you guys want to follow him on that, um, because he's always looking and asking other artists for what their opinions on what they need in, in a software. So I think with this package with nomad sculpt and with his program, when he finally gets around to releasing a beta, um, which I will let you guys know, um, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing and I'm super excited for, uh, you know, a tablet workflow. And other than that, guys, I hope you're having a wonderful day whenever, wherever you're at. Peace.